everybody, Edo here, and this is Meepleland. The good folks at Blue Orange Games sent, Game sent me a copy, and actually, they also hired me to do a how to play overview for Gen Con Online. And this is my review, but I did want to mention that. Of all of the games they sent me, I dig this one the most. I really, really, really like Meepleland. Uh, if you've ever played Zuloretto and you like dig Zuloretto, I think this game's for you. It's really well done. I enjoy it. Um, we are going to be creating uh, amusement parks, and everyone's going to start with their amusement park board. You get a uh, entrance at the front where you're going to be building it, and what you're going to be doing is buying tiles, setting them into your into your amusement park, and then bringing in, you know, amusement park customers to go to your tiles, to earn money, to work through, to get victory points at the end of the game. At the end of the game, they've got these nice little scorecards, but you're gonna be getting victory points for unique attractions, uh, as well as the different types of meeples in your park and ones that aren't in your park. There's also uh, actually some uh, path management in this game, so if you have dead end paths, you get some negative points. But it's pretty straightforward. What you're going to be doing is on your turn, you have the option essentially to purchase. Oh, everyone gets some money at the beginning of the game just based on um, turn order, and then every turn you're gonna get a stipend from uh, a loan from the team, you know, from the, the, the park management company or whatever to get you started. Um, and so, so you have some incoming money and then you're gonna get it from Meeples. So uh, on your turn, you will purchase. There's a, uh, a display or tableau of places you can buy from. When somebody buys, they get replaced. Uh, there are these big attractions, medium attractions, and then these essentially services, which I'll talk about. Uh, there are also a few other things you can buy. You can buy one additional plot of land, plot of land, uh, and you can buy uh, an additional entrance. You can even uh, pay and do advertisement to get some additional meeples to join your, to, to come to your park. So you go and you purchase. Let's say I purchase this big one here. You have to start your path at the end from your entrance. Uh, and then you're building the location. Now, as I build, I need to build off of my structures, but I um, I don't have, you, you always have to have one connecting path, but you don't have to, like, you might create a, a problem path later, but generally when you're building, you're building off your road, your path through your building. And so, you, you know, you can build this way, you can build this way, um, and it's a little hard to see. And even in the game, it's a little hard to see, but on your board in front of you, I find the paths are sufficient. Um, you, you would have a hard time seeing the padding on other people, but I, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not too big of a deal. Um, but so what you're doing is you're looking for unique attractions, and then the attractions allow for certain guest types to stand on them and give you uh, revenue. And so you're not only thinking about what you're building, but you're thinking about who's going to be, who's gonna be uh, there. The other little nuance, you have the big attractions, the small attractions, and you can put these in any order. You can flip them around, them around whatever makes sense. You're not flip, there's no backside to them, but like they can be upside down effectively. Is these little extra services, these connect like anything else with paths, and um, certain attractions want certain vendors next to them. So like this one gives a bo has a bonus slot uh, you, where you get bonus points if you are next to a gift shop. So uh, I could always place... Um, three people on this attraction, but if I have this, I'm going to get bonus money. Um, and then also, vendor uh, spots can connect to other attractions, so you like need one for two or three, depending on how you set it up. So there's some like nice little management. So, but we're going around buying, placing, buying, placing. At any point, and this is where there's a little bit like Zool right at any point on your turn, you can be like, I'm done. I don't want to spend any more money. I'm going to go pick up my customers. And so when you pick up your customers, you'd have your little gate over here. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick a bus and you're going to get everyone on it. Now, there are more green and blue meeples. They are worth less points at the end of the game. And then you have the gold and pink or yellow and pink meeples. They are worth a little bit more. So you need to keep that into account. But you're going to pick up, like right now, if I just had set this up, um, I have slots on this board for five pink and one green. Well, I'm going to look for something with pink and green. There isn't right now. Maybe I would have wanted to, I would have wanted to think about that. But so as not to have too many extra, I'm going to go take pink and gold. So I get this. Now, I'm effectively out for this round. Other players are playing, and then when they're ready to go, you're going to pick one up. Um, and you're going to have one more than the number of players, so everyone always gets a choice. 
but you might not have any pinks left. So like when you go out, it's important. And then essentially you get to put these meeples on spots that you have in your location. So this is pink, pink, that's green, I can't use it, pink. Now what you'll notice, I can't use any of my gold guys. Um, they're not worth negative points now. They, uh, I could place them as soon, like if on my next next round, I end up placing this building that picks up two um, gold, I can instantly bring them in. So there's really no, um, no problem with them being at your gate during the game, you just don't want them there at the end of the game. Um, so at the end of the round, you're gonna have some people out, and basically, if they're on a normal spot, they give you a buck. If they're on a, a spot with a plus a dollar, based on a vendor or something else, they give you two bucks. You add up, da, 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 get all your money, uh, and then you'll get your loan, your additional money based on the game, and later on, you're making enough money where that's not really a big deal, and you keep going. Again, you can add another entrance to start building another location. You could add more land if you need to. Um, you may find that Someone's take, taken all the pink, but you really want some, or taken all the blue, you want some blues, that's when you can spend a little money. And these are just the back of here, the back of these, so technically this is supposed to be one stack. And um, essentially, when I, I can flip it over because somebody bought something, or I can buy the top one to get those meeples and just add them to my, my board. Um, that's the game. Again, I really think the placement and pathing works really well. You really, oh, there's enough space that you have options, but also so you can feel smart. I really love the like spend until you're done and then get out dynamic. Like that really, that is a really great decision. Uh, and I, 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 we've played this a bunch and I find that the balance works well and the progression and like you can go, I'm gonna go for all buildings or I'm gonna go for all yellow and pink or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And it, it, it works well. So um, again, I think this is just a great family board game. It's really well done. I feel like it's going to be, you know, it says Meeple and it, yeah, I, I don't know how much this is going to grab people's attention, but like, just like Zularetto, I really feel like if you like Zularetto, like if you love Zularetto, which I think a lot of people do, I really think this belongs on your shelf as well. Um, the other thing, the one thing I'll note, this game has, okay, so like at first glance, it looks like a gorgeous insert. Like, it like has the shape, it feels cool. This is a terrible insert. Um, the shapes just don't align to what you're putting into it enough that there's like a consistent place to put stuff. And because of this like spacing, like this is not an insert where like if I go vertical, it's gonna keep it. So I'm not exactly what sure what happened. It's not the end of the world. Things do fit in enough that like it does work. But you're gonna like, like I think it's just weird. Like you're gonna open it up and be like, oh, that insert's great. And then you're gonna be like, wait a minute, why is it that shape? It's sort of like a mixture between trying to, trying to make it cool, but then also f needing like inserts to hold your stuff well. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I would be remiss not to bring that up. However, I totally dig this game. It's a game that I'm keeping and expect to play numerous times. So I highly recommend it. Sorry about the insert. Uh, I don't know what happened, but that's really the only thing that doesn't work. So, thanks for watching. Bye. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.